Assalamu alaikum. Um, so the topic I'm talking about today is making a choice. Um, so let's start with why we are here. Azabullah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim. Surah 38, verses 67 to 69, the great feud. Say, here's awesome news that you are totally oblivious to. I had no knowledge previously about the feud in the high society. Footnote says, the feud in the high society was triggered by Satan's challenge to God's absolute authority. This is definitely the most important event in the history of the human race. We failed to make a firm stand regarding God's absolute authority. This life represents the third and final chance to redeem ourselves. See the introduction in Appendix 7. Um, so I'm also going to read Appendix 7. The original sin. Contrary to common belief, the original sin was not Adam's violation of God's law when he ate from the forbidden tree. The original sin was our failure to uphold God's absolute authority during the great feud. If the human person convinces his or her jinn companion to denounce that original sin and uphold God's absolute authority, both creatures are redeemed to God's eternal kingdom on the day of judgment. But if the jinn companion convinces the human being to uphold Satan's idolatrous views, then both creatures are exiled forever from God's kingdom. Because our life in this world is a series of tests designed to expose our polytheistic ideas, idol worship is the only unforgivable offense. The world is divinely designed to manifest our decision to uphold either God's absolute authority or Satan's idolatrous views. So just to recap, our critical flaw in the great feud was that we did not uphold God's absolute authority. And now we are here, and this life is designed for us to make that decision. Now, in the great feud, we may not have sided with Satan, but just the fact that we didn't side with God, we stayed kind of in the middle on the fence. Um, in other words, we didn't choose to be with God. Um, we didn't make a firm stance. This is what caused us to come down here. So what's the number one thing that we need to change about ourselves if we want to make it back to God? We have to start making some decisions. So in the intro, it says, God does not want robots. The dispute in the heavenly community, as stated in 3869 and described above, proves that God's creatures possess the freedom of choice. They have minds of their own. The rebellion of a minuscule minority among God's creatures has served to emphasize the wonderful fact that God's creatures serve him because they appreciate his infinite magnificence. Without the rebellion, we would have never known that freedom is God's gift to his creatures. So again, now we're here, we have the freedom of choice, and this is our chance to choose God. Now, one of Satan's tricks is thinking that we only have to make this decision once. It is, it is one decision that we have to make, and the main decision that we, it is really the only decision that we make, but we have to make it every single day, in every single situation. Every time we're put in a situation, we, are, we can either uphold God's commandments or uphold Satan's commandments or somebody else who's not God. Surah 2, verse 108. Do you wish to demand of your messenger what was demanded of Moses in the past? Anyone who chooses disbelief instead of belief has truly strayed off the right path. Surah 2, verse 175. It is they who chose the straying instead of guidance and the retribution instead of forgiveness. Consequently, they will have to endure hell. Surah 3, verse 177. Those who choose disbelief instead of belief do not hurt God in the least. They have incurred a painful retribution. Surah 4, verse 44. Have you noted those who received a portion of the scripture and how they chose to stray and wish that you stray from the path? Surah 2, verse 148. Each of you chooses the direction to follow. You shall race towards righteousness. Wherever you may be, God will summon you all. God is omnipotent. So what I find interesting about Surah 2, verse 148, it says we choose the direction to follow, um, but we also have to stay in that direction. 
Um, Satan tries to create all these little side paths. You know, we think we've chosen the right direction, but we have to make sure that we stay on that direction. We can't think that once we choose the path of submission that we are just set, um, that we're going to just make it to heaven. Um, Surah 7, verse 96, most people make the wrong choice. Had the people of those communities believed and turned righteous, we would have showered them with blessings from the heaven and the earth. Since they decided to disbelieve, we punished them for what they earned. Surah 13, verse 27, those who disbelieve would say, if only a miracle could come down to him from his Lord, we would believe. Say, God sends astray whomever he wills and guides to him only those who obey. So how do we stay on the right path? We have to obey God. That includes obeying all of God's commandments, you know, following the Quran. That should be our number one goal. Surah 4, verse 137, Surely those who believe, then disbelieve, then believe, then disbelieve, then plunge deeper into disbelief. God will not forgive them, nor will he guide them in any way. Surah 63, verse 2. Under the guise of their apparent faith, they repel the people from the path of God. Miserable indeed is what they do. This is because they believed, then disbelieved. Hence, their minds are blocked. They do not understand. So this is something we all have to watch out for. This can happen to any of us. You know, we can, we can be believing and then fall into disbelief. So we have to be really careful and, you know, be conscious about that. If we think that we can never be wrong, you know, once we are guided, we can never fall off the path, then, you know, we're opening ourselves up to a lot of, um, we're opening ourselves up to Satan, basically. How do we prevent that from happening? Surah 2, verse 272. God is the only one who guides. You are not responsible for guiding anyone. God is the only one who guides whoever chooses to be guided. Any charity you give is for your own good. Any charity you give shall be for the sake of God. Any charity you give will be repaid to you without the least injustice. So again, we have to make the choice to be guided. That means we're constantly concerned about the hereafter. We're vigilant about following God's commandments. And we exclusively care about getting the right understanding, not having the right understanding. Surah 39, verse 18, follow the word of God. They are the ones who examine all words, then follow the best. These are the ones whom God has guided. These are the ones who possess intelligence. So as submitters, you know, we, we go to Quran studies, right? And we have to make sure that we are really examining everything before we make our decisions. That's why God tells us, you know, we consult with other believers, why, you know, it's a commandment to have Quran studies, and why God says to study the Quran carefully. Other examples of choices in the Quran um, include choosing who we befriend and support. Surah 3, verse 28, choose your friends carefully. The believers never ally themselves with the disbelievers instead of the believers. Whoever does this is exiled from God. Exempted are those who are forced to do this, to avoid persecution. God alerts you that you shall reverence him alone. To God is the ultimate destiny. Surah 5, verse 77, say, O people of the scripture, do not transgress the limits of your religion beyond the truth and do not follow the opinions of people who have gone astray and have misled multitudes of people. They are far astray from the right path. Surah 9, verse 23, if you have to make a choice. O you who believe, do not ally yourselves even with your parents and your siblings if they prefer disbelieving over believing. Those among you who ally themselves with them are transgressing. Proclaim, if your parents, your children, your siblings, your spouses, your family, the money you have earned, a business you worry about, and the homes you cherish are more beloved to you than God and his messenger and the striving in his cause, then just wait until God brings his judgment. God does not guide the wicked people. The footnote says, since the odds are overwhelming against any human being to actually believe and devote the worship to God alone, it is virtually impossible to see a whole family believe. Thus, most believers have been faced with the choice, either me or God and his messenger. 
This choice is consistently stated by spouses of the believers or their parents, their children, etc. Consistently, the believers made the right choice. This is a mandatory test for all believers. So this is something I actually didn't notice, but in the footnote it says, either me or God and his messenger. Um, and we see that this is really common now in submission that people say, hey, I'm a submitter, but they seem to have a lot of issues with you know, following teachings from the messenger. Surah 9, verse 16, the inevitable test. Did you think that you will be left alone without God distinguishing those among you who strive and never ally themselves with God's enemies or the enemies of his messenger or the enemies of the believers? God is fully cognizant of everything you do. This is called the inevitable test. So it means it will happen to all of us. We are all going to be in a situation where we have to distinguish who we are going to ally with who are the company that we want to keep. And we know that we don't have to come to those decisions um, uh, brashly. We have to carefully examine every situation. Sur 4, verse 94, O you who believe, if you strike in the cause of God, you shall be absolutely sure. Do not say to one who offers you peace, you are not a believer, seeking the spoils of this world. So we have to... We have to do our due diligence, we have to be careful. So in conclusion, as submitters, it can be really easy to fall into the trap of inaction, using God is running everything as an excuse to be a spectator. There are many global issues going on, uh, people around the world promoting falsehood while claiming to be submitters. It's very subtle and it can be easy to overlook or if we do see it, it can be easy to say, you know, this doesn't involve me, I don't need to get involved. Again, this is Satan's trap. We came to submission because we are critical thinkers and reflectors, and we care about worshiping God and supporting God over everything else. So as submitters, we are not people who just kind of let things happen and just spectate. It's very important for us to carefully examine each other's arguments and always support the truth. God encourages us to do our part to seek the truth, and this is something we also have to choose consistently every day in every situation. We constantly have to evaluate the company we keep, the people we support. We have to investigate you know, some of these global issues going on and make informed choices. And I just want to finish reading Surah 17, verse 18. Choose your priorities carefully this life. Anyone who chooses this fleeting life as his priority, we will rush to him what we decide to give him. Then we commit him to Jehenna, where he suffers forever, despised and defeated. Surah 9, verse 38. O oh, you who believe when you are told, mobilize in the cause of God, why do you become heavily attached to the ground? Have you chosen the swirly life in place of the hereafter? The materials of this world compared to the hereafter are nil. Thank you. Questions, comments? Hossein, you have a question? <laughs> it's, it's not scripted, <laughs> by the way. Um, okay, so you, you obviously, your, your topic, excellent topic, by the way. What was the inspiration for it? <laughs> well, actually. No, that wasn't my question. You have to answer that. Um, so, Hossein chose the topic for me, he just put it, he wrote it down for me, so I, I guess that was what God planned for me to talk about. So, uh, um, so, so you talked multiple times about making a choice. Um, my question for you is, specifically when it comes to the more global issues that are going on, right, what is the responsibility of the global community to be involved in those is it something that you see as individuals we should be, or we should just simply just have an opinion, and if it's brought up, we should be addressing it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, one quality of believers is that they examine all words and choose the best, right? So we know that as submitters, we have to, we have to do our research, we have to talk to everybody involved, and we have to see what the Quranic arguments are. That's the most important thing, right, is finding out 
what are the Quranic arguments that people are making globally or you know in our own communities that should really be the focus um, and you know once we compare that to the Quran um, that's kind of how we base what our decisions are does that make sense uh, and, and I believe it is really important that you know even if even if an issue is happening in another community if it has to do with the Quran if it has to do with two differences in religious understanding um, I mean it could be very easy to say well it's not happening in, happening in our community but what if it did happen in your community it's better to make that decision now than wait till it happens to your own community to make that decision um, yeah. uh, okay just one more question and then we'll move on Uh, <laughs> great speech. Uh, how do you deal with uh, people that they believe as you do, but they are uh, sympathizing with people who don't, and they, when, when you kind of ask them why you're doing that, they say, we, we cannot you know, just be rushing into it, we have to give people time, and you don't know when they're going to come to the same conclusions as you, but how much time you give them, and what is our responsibility towards dealing with the people who are sympathizing with the other groups? Well, we know that, you know, the Quran, the Quranic arguments are the most powerful arguments. So I think, you know, going back to verses where God talks about how we have to make these decisions. Um, and I think maybe trying to discuss with that person, there's a difference between, you know, trying to wait to make a decision after you acquire all the information that's very different from having all the information, but being, you know, kind of afraid to make that decision. There's, there's a big contrast between those two. Yeah. All right, and just one last question from Jamal here. Assalamu alaikum, uh, amazing speech, God bless you. Uh, so I just wanted to understand, get a, pro um, a kind of process approach to how would we deal with uh, a situation which we all recognize is unquranic? We all know we need to communicate and try and resolve it as a community issue, but the other side doesn't want to communicate. Like you're blocked from communication. They're not, uh, they, they don't want to sit down and resolve this. I mean, what would be the, the, the approach to this? I mean, because that, this is like a, something that I don't find in the Quran in the sense that you know, you can't force someone, therefore, what do we do? Yet the situation just keeps escalating and getting worse. Are you what talking was, about, like, personal issues that may be the root? Just, 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 just a community issue, whether it's personal or <coughs> mixed with personal and religious. What would you think would be a, a Quranic solution to that, if you have one to share? So I think it, it definitely matters whether it is a personal issue compared to a religious issue. Um, if it is personal, I would say that, you know, we know that Satan will always try to drive a wedge between us and another believer. And I, someone actually gave a speech that really, you know, went into length discussing that. Um, Satan will always try to drive a wedge, um, and we have to do everything that we can to not let him. So if a person doesn't want to sit down with us, we have to make every effort and we, can, and we can keep making that effort if we see that this is just a personal issue. Um, now, if it is a religious issue, there are varying degrees um, of differences in religious understanding, right? I think the most important thing, though, is, you know, even if you can't talk to that person specifically, you consult with other believers. Um, God says to study the Quran carefully, so we want to make sure, like, we, we really study everything and, and come to the right understanding. Um, and inshallah try and have that person be part of those discussions maybe if somebody else is talking to them that might be helpful um, but I think it definitely matters if it's personal or it's religious okay thank you sir